Good day, grade 10s, and welcome to first week, the first lesson of the first week of grade 10 mathematics. We're going to start with talking about, about algebraic expressions. Algebraic expressions. So, the first part of algebraic expressions, before we can even look at algebra, we need to understand the real number system. So, I want you to think about it this way. Let's pretend that we have a caveman and he has a number of apples. Okay, right. So, if I come along to the one caveman and say, how many apples do you have? He might say he's got three apples or he might say that he has got four apples and or he might say he's got one apple. So, that would be the natural numbers. The natural numbers, the natural numbers are basically a set from one two, three, they're whole numbers, and they go to positive infinity. Right. Now what happens is someone, poor person, went along and stole all the apples from that caveman. So where do we end up with then? We end up with zero apples. Zero apples. So our whole numbers end up coming, including, and these are actually these whole numbers, we change, we can call those counting numbers. The counting numbers include zero. So your counting includes zero. So we end up with basically being zero, one, two, three. Okay, right. Then let's think about the fact that if I basically owed someone some apples, then I would have in my own, I would owe the person apples, therefore I would effectively have negative at apples. And that is what integers are. Integers are whole numbers, but they range from minus infinity, minus infinity, um, whole numbers, all the way through to positive infinity. Okay, so those are your integers. Now, gets a little bit more complicated because at the moment we've only been talking about whole numbers as in like minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 1, 2. But what happens if the caveman has an apple and someone comes along and takes a huge bite out of the apple? Then he ends up having only half an apple. Now if the bite is a whole half of an apple then it's fine because that is a rational number. And if he has a funny little bite, then he might have taken, I don't know, one-eighth or one-seventh of the apple. Then we can start talking about irrational numbers. So today's lesson is really just helping us to understand rational versus irrational numbers. So let's start with rational numbers. Rational numbers are defined as any number that can be written as a fraction. A over B, where A and B are integers and B does not equal naught. So remember, what are your integers? Your integers are a set from a minus infinity through to positive infinity, okay? Minus infinity through to positive infinity, and they are whole numbers, whole numbers, okay? So examples of your rational numbers are, for example, 10 over 1, 21 over 7, minus 1 over minus 3, 10 over 20 and minus 3 over 6. So you can see that all whole numbers are either at the top or the bottom, and they can be either positive or negative or both. Your denominator, your denominator cannot be equal to 0, because if it's equal to 0, then you're dividing by 0, which is undefined. So you cannot have a denominator which is zero. Let's look at writing a rational number as a decimal. The following types of decimals are rational. For example, 0.8. The reason that that is rational is because we can actually write that as 8 over 10. 8 over 10 is the same thing as 0.8, so we know that it is rational. So in other words, decimals that end, decimal numbers that end are rational. Another example is decimals that have a single repeating digit. For example, 0.66666. The reason for this is because this is actually equal to 2 over 3. If you put 2 over 3 in your calculator, you will get 0, 66666. And then depending on your calculator, the last number might be a 7 because they are rounding up. But that's actually it's the same as 0, 0.33. 
is the same as one third. So this decimal to have a single repeating digit is also a rational number. And finally, decimals that have recurring patterns of multiple digits are considered to be rational. In other words, if it's 27, 27, 27, 27, then we can say, oh, look, it's recurring, and therefore it is a rational number. Now let's talk about irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are written as basically Q dash, and if you want to be pedantic, there should be a little line there. So it's Q dash. Definition, irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction with a numerator and denominator's integers. They cannot be written as a fraction. So your examples are your root 2, root 3, cube root of 4 pi, and 1 plus root 5 over 2. If you put any of these in your calculator, you'll end up with very long numbers. In fact, the digits will just carry on forever and ever and ever. So if a decimal number continues without a repeated pattern of digits, then it's an irrational number. So for example, pi is 3.141592653, whatever, and it just keeps going. In fact, they haven't yet managed to get to the end of pi. And what you can see here is this very cool room in the Palais de la Couve. De Covert. I don't know how to pronounce that properly, I'm not French, but that's actually in a university in Paris and there is a thing called the Pi Room and the reason they call it the Pi Room is because it's pretty old but it's very cool, is that they've actually put in wooden blocks or wooden letters all the way around the room I think, it, I think it's at least a hundred digits of Pi and they just keep going and going and going and so far, they haven't found one repeating sequence on pi. So pi is like the ultimate irrational number. Right, grade 10s, I hope that you now understand the difference between rational and irrational numbers. Please make sure you do understand and do the assessment at the end of the section. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.